Reading poetry is awesome. Writing poetry is awesome, Ma. Stick around to find out more about how to read poetry and how to take your poetry writing from meh to magnificent. Derek Walcott was probably the most famous Caribbean poet of all time. 25 Poems, his debut collection, came out when he was a teenager in St. Lucia. His mom paid the $200 for him to publish the book. It was a great investment. Obvi, Walcott was born in 1930. He published his first poem when he was just 14 years old. It was a religious poem. He said many years later, I have never separated the writing of poetry from prayer. I have grown up believing it is a vocation, a religious vocation. Walcott was a playwright, one of the best and the most prolific in the region. In his poetry, plays and essays, he often considered the effects of colonialism on people, on art and on language. Walcott was a serious artist all his life, painting some of the very things he wrote about in his poetry. His poem, A Lesson for This Sunday, is written kind of like a painting with vivid colors and bold images. The growing idleness of summer grass with its frail kites of furious butterflies. See? Right away, you get a picture of a bright green lawn with butterflies floating like kites over it. Later in the poem, we see the butterflies have yellow wings. It's idyllic. A man swinging in a hammock while a maid airs out the linens. Super peaceful. Until two little kids start torturing the butterflies and the maid pulls them away from their science experiment. Remember what Walcott said about religion? The word lesson in the title hints at it. Bible readings are sometimes called lessons. The maid is singing a praise song, a hosanna, and the narrator says the butterfly torture interrupts his Sabbath with sin. Derek Walcott's poetry is packed with images and poetic devices. He won the Nobel Prize and many other honors for his writing. He died in 2017 and got a hero's funeral in his homeland. You can write poetry about anything. Seriously, anything. Poets have written about big, important world events, famous people, and wars. But they've also written poems about bugs, Shoes, babies, hair, teeth. One of the most famous poems in the world was written about a vase. O oh, attic shape, fair attitude, with breed of marble men and maidens overwrought, with forest branches and the trodden weed, thou, silent form, dost tease us out of thought, as doth eternity. Right? So that happened. The point is, there's lots of different kinds of poems. Actually, Ode on a Grecian Urn by John Keats is a good place to start talking about types of poems. It's an ode. It's right there in the name. Yep, an ode is a formal poem that addresses and usually celebrates whatever it's about. The ode is a different style of poem than the ballad. A ballad is more of a story poem celebrating a heroic or funny person or adventure. And both of them are different from a lament, which is a poem about something sad or tragic, but which doesn't necessarily tell a story. Or an elegy, which is a poem that mourns someone or something which has passed away. Some poems are more about the story they tell, and some are more about the emotions the poet wants the reader to experience. Who cares what kind of poem it is? Other than passing an exam, what's the point of knowing? Strictly speaking, 
recognizing the type of poem you're reading doesn't help you as a reader. Because every poem stands alone when you're reading it. But knowing what kind of poem you're reading can help you as a writer. If you want to write good poetry, you have to read a lot of poems. This helps when you're writing, because you learn more about what poetry looks like and sounds like. When you read a lot of poems, you learn what kind of poetry you like to read. And that will probably influence the kind of poetry you'll write. Old poems, new poems, short poems, long poems, poems from around the world, poems on different topics. If you know that it's in the category of ballad or lament or whatever, it allows you to compare that poem to other poems in the same category and see how each writer does their magic in that piece. Now, back to our regular programming. You've probably seen a glossary of poetry terms, including the different types of poems there are. But how do you know what kind of poem you're reading? Hmm. Let's take a look at Dreaming Black Boy by James Berry. I wish my teacher's eyes wouldn't go past me today. Wish he'd know it's okay to hug me when I kick a goal. Wish I myself wouldn't hold back when answer comes. Read the poem yourself. After you've read it a couple of times, ask, how does the poem make me feel? Most readers would probably say it made them feel sad, angry, or frustrated. The narrator, the dreaming black boy from the title, is being ignored and humiliated and pushed to the side. But why? From the imagery and references in the poem, it's because of his race. The narrator has woodchopper ancestors, that's an allusion to an old, racist idea. Imagine, people thought that because so many Africans had been enslaved for hundreds of years in the New World, they were cursed too? <sighs> Crazy. In the second stanza, the narrator wishes he could travel the world without being barred by anyone. That calls to mind segregation. In most parts of the world, until the global mid-20th century, White people had different rights from black people. In the third stanza, the poet name drops Paul Robeson, a famous African-American actor and civil rights activist. When you put all the clues together, you see that this is a poem about the oppression of black people. What kind of poem is it? It's a complaint. Now let's check out South by Kamau Brathwaite. But today, I recapture the island's bright beaches. Blue mist from the ocean rolling into the fishermen's houses. South is six stanzas of beautifully metered lines comparing the sea to other places. The images of the sea are pretty and friendly. There's blue mist and the rolling ocean in the first stanza and bright waves later on. I think it's safe to say the narrator was a fan of the sea. Big fan. Not so much the other places the narrator says he's lived in. The stoniest cities, sharp, slanting, sleet, and the hail. You get the picture. No? What about the forest where the shadows oppress him? No? Still? The narrator especially hates on rivers, which is interesting, because you'd think rivers and seas are about the same as an image. Both are big bodies of water, and both are always moving and changing. Except, the narrator doesn't see the similarities so much as the differences. The sea is limitless, but a river is always destined to make its cunning declension down to the sea. The sea's waves splash up to refresh us, while the river's water has a tepid taste. Is this poem about the sea? Or is it what the sea represents to the narrator? Yeah, he likes the beach and the waves, but he's looking at it all through nostalgic eyes. This is the place where he grew up, the place he loves the most. All other places have taken him away from here. The rivers especially seem to remind him of how hard he has to press day after day to achieve his dreams, just as the rivers run day after day to reach the sea. Because the poem celebrates the sea and that idyllic past and has a formal structure, 
We can see it's an ode. Many traditional Caribbean songs have something in common. They are ballads. Here's your challenge. Write a folk, calypso, chutney, or reggae ballad about a person or incident. Use strongly rhythmic language and rhyme to make it memorable. And since it's a ballad, it's got to tell a good story. Try it.